Hello, good morning and a massive welcome to Church Online this morning, wherever you are tuning in from. We are so thrilled that you are here and we're looking forward to a good morning together. We are. Happy Boxing Day, everyone. Yes, we hope you had a great Christmas yesterday and however you were celebrating, we just pray that this season would be full of the love, the joy, the peace and the hope of Jesus Christ yes. and yeah we hope that you've had the opportunity to see friends family however you've been celebrating and also, even if you haven't yeah. um, you know we just we want you to know we're sending our love to you today That's right. we're keeping you in our prayers and um, our sincere prayer for all of us this yeah. Christmas has not just been that we would have a great time no with friends and family but also that it would really be a time of yeah. Finding rest, yes. Uh, finding peace, finding restoration in the presence of God as we reflect on all that Jesus has won for us um, by coming at Christmas time. That's right, Emmanuel, God with us. And we also hope that you've eaten lots of chocolate. Yes, we do hope that as well. You know, like pigs in blankets, turkey, yes. Christmas pudding, yes, cream, yes, mince pies, yes. Basically, like you know, the Christmas spread. For a second, I thought you were listing different types of chocolate until no, I realised what no, you were doing. No, 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 that's different types of Christmas food, baby. Mm -hmm. But while we're not gathering in person today, we are gathering here in this online yes. space. And so we'd love to encourage you. And um, let us know that you're here in the comments. Let's greet one another. Let's yes. welcome each other to church today. Maybe you do want to let us know what did you have for Christmas dinner? Yes. Maybe you do just want to drop some festive emojis in the comments there below. Maybe. And maybe you want to tell us, you know, like, what are some of the awesome Christmas traditions that you have? Yeah, yeah, let us know. Let's keep it interactive. Let's yes. keep it, let's, um, you know, church is all about us as the people of God gathering together. And let's do that online this morning, which is brilliant. It is. Well, we have got a treat in store for you this morning. Do. I'm going to say that. And um, Ian's going to be continuing our Behold series in just a few moments time. But before that, we want to take some time to be in the presence of God together, worshipping him, magnifying his name and fixing our eyes on him. And our team have prepared an amazing Christmas worship set for us. And so we're going to put play that in just one second. But yeah. before we do, Ian, why don't you pray for us as we go into worship today? Awesome. Amazing. Let's pray. Yeah. Thank you, God. Jesus, we thank you so much that you came at Christmas. Yes, You God. came to dwell amongst us and to be with us as yes, your people. And Holy Spirit, we pray right now as we come to worship you and yes, elevate God. you. We pray that we would sense you, Holy Spirit, yes. with us in this moment as we praise and we worship you. Mm. Amen. 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 Let's worship together, church.
Holy Spirit, we just recognize you here in this moment and we say that you are welcome. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to the third part of our Behold series. And this morning I am preaching a message which I'm calling Exceeding Great Joy. So I want us to turn um, to our Bibles to Matthew 2 um, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, May drive from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed on all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child of his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Amazing. Well, as I said, this morning I want to speak about joy. And uh, the message is called Exceeding Great Joy. And it's taken from verse 10. Now, in the ESV version, um, it says this for verse 10. It says, when they, that's the Magi, saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. The NLT says this, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. And the Passion Translation um, translates verse 10 in this way. And when they saw the star, they were so ecstatic that they shouted and celebrated with unrestrained joy. Joy is something that every single human being looks for. Joy is something that every single being is longing for. And the thing that I want us to behold this morning is the fact, and here's my big idea, that beholding Jesus leads us to rich deep overflowing joy because Jesus is the source of all joy. What the Magi teach us more than anything else is the fact that Jesus is what we've been looking for. Jesus is the source of all joy and that in our culture though our culture says this is where happiness is, what the Christmas story actually invites us into is beholding Jesus so that we can discover a joy that is not based on external circumstance or based on the situations that we may find ourselves in. That it's actually based on something that is on the inside of us that cannot be robbed or taken from us. And I don't know about you, but when I talk to people, when I meet people, um, when I'm having conversations with people, and once those conversations go a little bit deeper, one of the things that I find so often is that people are always on a search. They search for something to make them happy. They're, they're on the search to find something that makes and allows their deepest longings to actually be satisfied. Often when we move to new places or we embrace new experiences, really what it is, it's a substitute for the fact that what we're looking for is joy. And one of the beautiful things about the Christmas story is that it shows us that joy is found in Jesus. So this morning, I want to look at three things that this story shows us about joy and why we need it. Here's the first one. 
Joy is the response when we allow our deepest longings to be met in Jesus. We're all just living our lives the best that we can, aren't we? Um, the funny thing about life is, is that often there isn't actually um, any reliable map that shows us exactly what we should be doing. You know, we go through education, we get taught a little bit, and maybe we get some experiences that show us some of the things that life are about. But actually, we're surrounded by lots of different narratives, lots of different people who tell us this is what life is about. This is what we should be doing. Our culture in advertising, um, knowing this, um, actually leads us towards this. It, it offers us this idea and this notion that if we just invest ourselves in their particular experience or their particular product, actually it will satisfy us on the inside. And looking at the story and reading it through, I've realised that the Magi's story, these three wise men as we often refer to them, that what they actually capture is they capture the three different reactions that people often have to the story of Jesus. The first, the first group is people like Herod. And what this story shows is, is that there are, there are three groups of people who respond to Jesus coming. And two, in two of those cases, they don't get what they want, despite the fact that they are trying to manoeuvre things so that it satisfies their deepest longings. Actually, they don't receive them. But there's one group here in this story and their response shows us that their longings can be fulfilled and they can experience overflowing joy. The first reaction we see is in people like Herod and we find it in verse 3. It says this, when King Herod heard this, in other words, heard what the Magi were coming to do. He was disturbed on all Jerusalem with him. In other versions, it says this, when Herod the king heard this, heard the news about Jesus' arrival, he was troubled. You see, Herod hears the news and instantly his thought is, how can I protect my power? How can I protect my position? How can I protect everything that I've worked for? And I think in our culture, it's what we're encouraged to do. We're encouraged to hustle, we're encouraged to work hard, we're encouraged to chase that position, chase that career. And I think that whilst there's nothing wrong with, you know, pursuing a career, I think when we make it our sole focus, what Herod shows us is that when we make it our sole focus, actually, when real joy comes along, we will react to it in such a way as we want, to, we want to snuff out the possibility of joy. And in our pursuit of what is making us happy, what we will actually miss in the process is joy. That when joy turns up in our doorstep, we will actually possibly even see it as a threat. Then there's a second group of people that we see um, in this story with Magi. And they're the priests. These are people who, they'd studied Old Testament scripture. They knew about the prophecy that one day God would send a Messiah. Someone who would come and rescue Israel. This was the story that they had been hanging on to with all of their hope, all of their lives. It was a story that if you became a priest, you would know inside out. These were people who were experts in the Torah and experts in the law. And I think, what, I think what their story captures is this. I think it captures that sometimes, even as Christians, we need to beware of the danger of, we know the Christmas story so well. We know what Jesus did for us so well, that if we're not careful, we can actually become so blasé with it that we actually forget the wonder and the joy of the fact that Jesus came to save us. That we get so busy pursuing the things of Jesus that we miss the person of Jesus. And this is what we see them doing. 
Herod calls them in and he, he asks their opinion. He says, he says, tell me about this Messiah. Tell me about where he will be born. And they give him the right answer. They say, well, the scripture says that the Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem. But here's what interests me about their response. Although they know that the Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem, even when these, <clears throat> even when these magi, these people who they are not followers of the Jewish law, yet when they have looked up into the stars, they have recognized that something significant is about to take place. These priests, these people who are followers of the one true God, followers of Yahweh, who know the prophecies about Jesus, who know the prophecies about the fact that there will be a Messiah. When a credible group of people come and have traveled thousands of miles to say, we think this person could be the Messiah. What I find so interesting about their reaction is that they do nothing. Although it is only seven miles down the road to Bethlehem, the Jewish priests remain exactly where they are, waiting, waiting for the long promised Messiah, not recognizing the fact that the wait is over. The Messiah, Jesus, has come. I wonder for you this morning, where is it you are waiting? where Jesus has already said, the thing that I've promised has already come. It's time for you to make the steps. To use this as a metaphor, it's time for you to leave Jerusalem and to make the journey to Bethlehem. I find it fascinating that if these Jewish priests had just made that journey, they too would have shared in the joy that God had for every single person. But they missed it. And maybe today what God is saying to you is he's, he's saying, you've moved away from the joy that I have for you. It's time for you to make the journey, the seven mile journey down the road to Bethlehem, to position your life so that you too can encounter the joy of Jesus coming and dwelling with you. Because the truth is, is that Jesus wants to come and dwell with every single one of us. That's the offer that he gives, not an external experience or change in our circumstance that is somehow going to give us momentary happiness. But the presence of Jesus Christ through the power of his Holy Spirit, alive on the inside of us, giving us joy. And that's the beautiful thing that we see in the, Mag in the Magi here this morning, these three wise men. They represent a different response. You see, they see the sign. But more than seeing the sign, they make the journey. They travel the thousands of miles. They go to meet King Herod, this king of the Jews, and they come to ask him where they can find this Messiah. We don't know how much they may have even understood about Jewish tradition, Jewish law. They may not have fully understand, understood why they were coming, but they knew that they had to come. And even though they didn't have any of the background of the Jewish nation, they didn't have any of the understanding about the one true God, they knew that there was something significant in this moment. And so they came. They didn't numb themselves to the fact that there was a promise. They allowed themselves to be fully present in this moment and they kept faithfully following this star. And so, much like you see throughout the Christmas story, you see the story of a longing fulfilled. This isn't just a story of people who make an incredible journey. It's a story of people who make an incredible journey and then have their deepest longings fulfilled. And that's exactly what we see for the Magi here. Verse 10 captures it so beautifully. And when they, the Magi, saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. You see, this is the first time 
that joy is mentioned in the New Testament. And it's by a group of people who aren't even Jewish encountering the Messiah. And when they see the Messiah, when they see the sign that the Messiah has come, they are filled with exceeding great joy. What the Greek's trying to capture here, because um, I, I love the way that um, I love the way the ESV um, translates this. It's sort of saying, look, this was incredibly good news, but there aren't enough words in the English language to capture it. So what they do is they just say, rejoiced, exceedingly great joy. In other words, this was joy on a whole new level. This wasn't a fleeting passing moment where you feel a little bit happy or where even you feel a lot happy. This is exceeding great joy. This is a kind of joy, a kind of contentment, a peace like Kat was preaching about last week that fills you on the inside, that lets you know that every single one of your deepest longings has been met. The longing to know that you're accepted, the longing to know that God is at work in each and every single situation that you find yourself. The fact that God is going to work all things together for good. The fact that God can resolve every single broken hurt and heart that we have on the inside of us. That our need to feel like that we matter, that there is a purpose, that there is a destiny, that there is a hope for our lives. And the fact that what we do matters in this life and that we do not, we're not just here to make up the numbers. The joy that Jesus offers is a fulfillment of every single one of those deep appetites and deep longings on the inside of us. So that we can sit there and we can say, I am complete. I am whole because Jesus has already filled me with exceeding great joy. This is the kind of joy that the writer of this gospel, Matthew, is trying to capture. He's trying to show us that Jesus is the source of all joy because he's the only one who can meet our deepest longings. And this Christmas, I think we're being invited to live differently. You know, as we stand on the edge of a brand new year, I think what Jesus is inviting us into is he's inviting us into a different year. A year where it's not live watching our feeds or wondering and waiting for those things that are in our heart and waiting and hoping for those things to come to pass. It's not about chasing our careers. It's not about the hustle dominating our lives. In this moment, I feel like what Jesus is inviting us into is he's inviting us into exceeding great joy. And I wonder this Christmas, what if we began to ask the question as we stand on the edge of 2022, Am I seeking joy where Jesus is? Number two, joy is something we're called to cultivate. I think our reaction to joy is often that we feel like joy is something that comes along um, infrequently, a little bit like a miracle, um, and it's something that we can't control. And um, it's something that we can't make happen in our world. And so we kind of, I think we approach joy a little bit like it's some kind of secret that's been buried somewhere. And all of our life, we are seeking joy. We're seeking discovering it. And if we're really, really lucky, occasionally we will find like a pearl of joy in the soil of all of our lives and that we'll come across it. And for a moment, for a, a split second, we'll have like this brief experience of joy, but then it will go away and we're left in the dirt once again. But I don't think that's what the story of the Magi actually shows us. If we come to verse 11 and um, we find these um, words, and I'll just read them out to you. It says, on coming to the house, the Magi saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. 
You see, what I see here is, is I see a joy that has been cultivated. They have joy in the inside of them. They've been following this sign for thousands and thousands of miles and months upon months upon months. And in this moment, as they actually reach the end of their quest, the end of everything that they have been seeking. Yes, it's a wonderful moment, but it's rich and it's powerful because all the way along that journey, they have been cultivating joy. They've been looking up towards the stars, trying to read and interpret the signs and following along this arduous, difficult journey. And now they experience the end of their quest, the completion. And then the Magi, they reach the stable. But all of this is the, is the culmination of the fact that all the way along this journey, they have been cultivating joy. And I think that's what this story shows us. And it, and it challenges us. It says, how in our lives are we cultivating joy? Our culture says that joy is something that is momentarily discovered and doesn't last very long. But what the Magi show us is that actually joy is something that is cultivated as we seek after and as we look towards the right things. I love the fact that in Hebrews 12, it talks about this. It says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. You see, when we fix our eyes on Jesus and we keep our gaze there, what actually happens is, and what we're actually doing is, we're cultivating joy on the inside of us. Hebrews, once again, talking about Jesus, says, for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. You see, when we cultivate joy, the other thing that takes place is it actually gives us endurance. It gives us endurance for the difficult moments in our lives. It gives us um, endurance for the journey of life. I'm sure that the Magi on their journey, there'd be moments where as they're following this star, they're probably thinking how much further, how much longer. But because they kept their eyes fixed on the star and as they cultivated joy, knowing what that star meant in that moment, it allowed them to endure the journey so that they could find themselves at the door of the stable, looking in, seeing Jesus, encountering Christ and everything that he meant so that they could bow down and worship him. And I feel this Christmas, Jesus is asking us and challenging us, where are we cultivating joy in our life? Are we like the Magi, that we have our eyes fixed on the star, the star of Jesus, and we are allowing Jesus to speak into our world and into our situation? And that rather than looking at our situations with um, just our human eyes, we look at our situations and then we invite Jesus into them. We say, Jesus, show me how to see this thing with the right perspective. Jesus, may I cultivate joy as I walk through this situation and this circumstance. Because I believe that Jesus has joy for us, no matter what it is we are going through and contending with this Christmas. And the final thing I think that the Magi's story shows us is this, that joy creates community. I find it fascinating again, verse 11. Going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh. Now, I want us to imagine the incredulity of this moment, because I think it's easy for us to miss it. These are, these are magi. We often say three wise men, but we actually don't know how many of them there were. But these are astrologers from a radically different culture. They have traveled for months and months and months because they have seen this star. They belong to a culture that worships many gods. We don't even know if they knew the one true God, but yet they understood that there was something significant about this moment, which is why they'd come here. And yet what this scene shows us is this moment, Side by side, these astrologers from a radically different culture, 
They're sharing a moment with this young Jewish mother who is the mother of the Messiah. And I think what this perfectly captures and what Christmas captures, and even though I know that so often, you know, the Christmas paintings where you see the shepherds and you see Joseph and Mary and you see the Magi and they're all there at the same time. And hey, look, I know that historically speaking, that picture is, you know, probably not true. But here's what the picture does capture, which is actually theologically and spiritually powerful. What it captures and what the Magi story shows us is that when we behold the person of Jesus, not only do we experience joy, but it's a joy that breaks down the barriers that divide. It's joy that actually creates unity. And that's one of the things that the Christmas story shows us. It shows us that when we behold Jesus, we experience joy and that joy breaks down the barriers that are often between us. It invites us to see each other through a different lens, through the lens of a group of people, a community of people who are gathering together because we worship one person, one name, and his name is Jesus Christ. And that allows us to step over barriers of culture and of society, of, be of other beliefs and other ideas, of race, what Jesus is inviting us into is a joy where we behold him. And so we recognize that we are sons and daughters of the king. And as sons and daughters of the king, that makes us equal in the eyes of Christ. We stand in the same place. We stand under the same blood. We stand in a position of grace that has been given towards us. We stand in a position where because of what Jesus has done, we have been reconciled to Christ so that he lives on the inside of him. And all of us have the same offer of peace. All of us have the same love extended towards us. And that is the source of Christian joy. It's a joy not because of something that externally has happened to us. It's because of the presence of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And this morning, I believe more than anything else, this is the picture that Christ wants us to behold as a church community here in C3 Sunderland. Whatever your 2021 has looked like, I believe in this Christmas moment, what Jesus is reminding us once again, we are a community. We are a community who worship together. We work together. We laugh together. We cry together. We believe in each other and for one another. And that what we are called to is to be invested in each other's lives. We're called to pray for one another. We're called to encourage one another. And we're called to seek together to become more like Christ. And so this morning, Jesus, I think, offers every single one of us the gift of joy. Joy that can be experienced no matter where we are, no matter who we are, because we belong to Jesus Christ. And let me say, maybe you're watching and you don't know Jesus Christ right now. Let me say what this moment, these magi crafted by the Holy Spirit into this story show us is this, that it does not matter how distant and how far away we may feel from Jesus. That what has been happening right now is, I believe that for some of you, Jesus has been bringing you on your own Magi story, your own Magi journey. And he's called you from afar. Maybe you've never even considered Christianity before, but in this moment, as you are just fixing your attention and your gaze on Jesus. It's like, you're like those Magi that first Christmas and you're finding yourself on the inside of something that you never expected to find yourself on the inside of. And you feel a sense that you want to come and worship. You want to come and give your life. Can I say to you that this morning is a perfect moment to do that? I'm just going to pray a very simple prayer. 
prayer, I'd encourage you to say this. Jesus, I recognize that you are real. I invite you into my life. Come and live within me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, awesome, amazing. I also want to encourage you, you know, if you're part of our church community, I want to um, just leave you with just like three questions that you can just use to meditate and reflect on this week. And the first question comes um, from my first point. If joy is the response to when we allow Jesus to meet our deepest longings, where do you need to recapture and allow Jesus to meet your deepest longings again? The second is how will you cultivate joy this year? And the third, how are you participating in community in this season? Building strong connections with people who are part of this community and how are you going to be even more part of this community in this year? Well, thank you so much. It's been so wonderful to bring this message of joy to you, a joy that just brings each and every single one of us together and into the presence of Jesus. I really want to pray that you have felt the sense of the Holy Spirit over this message and in your spirit right now, uplifting and encouraging you. I pray that over the next week, God is just going to have, you're going to have significant God moments this week where you experience the presence of God in a fresh and a living and a life-giving way once again. God bless you, church. I love you. I can't wait to see you again in